Hey everybody, and welcome to another MotukeFigures.com video spotlight. A uh, little warning here, we're doing things a little different this time. We're having some camera issues, so what we're doing is Blaze and I are recording audio where we talk about the figure, and then we're going to supplement that with pictures of the figure. We don't know when the camera thing's going to be sorted out, and we don't want to get too far behind. So we're trying this. You know what? What do you think? It might, it might work a little bit better. Yeah. I mean, it'll show the figure more, that way they know what we're talking about. Yeah. This, otherwise, it's just us talking. We kind of hold up the figure sometimes. But this way, they'll actually see what we're talking about. Yeah. What figure are we tackling today? Hurricane Hoda. Should I also name the three cons Hordak? Well, hang on. Okay. Um, we're, we're, we're doing Hurricane Hordak. There are, there are three vintage Hordaks. Yep. There's your standard Hordak. There's this Hurricane Hordak. And then there was... Buzz Hall. Buzz Hall Hordak. So it... They, uh, for the first Hordak variation in the Motu Classics line, they chose Hurricane Hordak. And, uh, Blaze, do you want to fill, fill in everybody why we think that they didn't do Buzzsaw Hordak? Yeah. They can't, like, make it pop and Buzzsaw action or whatever. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're, we're not sure if they'll even do Buzzsaw Hordak, because he's they basically... Can't. Yeah, well, they can't do the action feature, and otherwise that's just a standard Hordak, you know? Other than the chest popping well, open... Well, I guess they could, like, get, like, a chainsaw, and there's, like, this, like, little part in his chest where you could, like, I guess, connect the chainsaw to him. Yeah, but still, the whole feature yeah. is that there's a buzzsaw inside of his chest and it pops uh, out. So it would, it would, yeah. it wouldn't make sense for them to try it. So we get Hurricane Hordak as the first variation. Yep. Now, there's a lot of parts on here that are just like the old Hordak, and there's a lot of parts that are slightly tweaked from the old Hordak. So let's talk about the slightly tweaked stuff, and then we'll go into the really different stuff. Okay. The head sculpt is the same, yeah. but there's some differences, right? Yep. We've got, like, a more pinkish tone, would you say? To the, the like, the bony parts? Yeah. Like, it's kind of more pinkish. Um, the hood area is pretty much the same, but it's missing the cape. Yeah, now. which is kind of cool. I, I like it. I think it's cool to have, it's like filmation. Yeah. You didn't use the cape when filmation. <laughs> I guess they're sure going for a filmation type look, but not full-on filmation, because they're not allowed. Well, no, they're allowed. Remember, they're allowed to do filmation Yeah, but now. not by the time they... I bet they had this figure, um... Before they got the Oh, you, you bet they started before yeah. they got the rights? Well, the, the thing, too, is, is it's a straight-up redo of the vintage figure. The vintage figure, Hurricane Hordak, didn't have a cape either. Yeah. But it is neat that now we have this piece. So if, yeah. for some reason, you wanted to take this off and put it on your other Hordak, it's a... Like, when I was a kid, I didn't have a cape on my Hordak very much. Yeah. Um, I Definitely think we talked not. about that before. I've never had a cape on your Hordak. Um, but I could pop off the head in this hood and put it on the other Hordak and have a Hordak in regular armor without the cape on. Yeah. And the reverse is true, too. You could take the cape area and put it on the Hurricane Hordak if you wanted a more, like, regal Hordak, you know? Like, what do you mean, like, regal? Because he's got that gold armor and, like, a oh, red cape flowing and yeah. stuff. He's kind of neat looking, you know? Never okay. Really tried it. So so moving down, you know we've got. It's like this chest piece because I have something to say about that. Oh, hang on, we'll get to that. That's because okay. that's something new. Oh. We're going to focus on what was the same but slightly tweaked first. Okay. Let's move down to his boots because on the boots, you know, it's the same sculpt, but they've gotten rid of this silver, silver. highlighting and done like a black gloss highlighting instead, like, which I kind of like. They have a few silver parts, but not as much as that. No, exactly. The trim is no longer silver, but the little like rivets are still silver. Yeah. Um, I really dig it. I think it's cool looking. Well, they didn't have those little rivets. So, wait, yes, they did. They're there, yeah. So, so that's the, that's the same but different. And then there, there's one thing that's the same that I wish was different, and that's the loincloth. Oh, yeah. You know, they, they use these longer loincloths for, like, the yeah. preternia type characters. Like, King Grayskull's got the longer one. And, if they were the and, formation where what if they put a longer loincloth in that? That would not I would sense. I would hope not. I, 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 I don't know why this, this gets me so much. But I really like that the way that shorter loincloth thing looks. Yeah. So it would be cool if on this figure, since they're trying to do like a, a different take on Hurricane Hordak here, um, and we'll get into this in the bio later, that it's more like a modern Hordak, it would be neat if they went ahead and did the shorter loincloth yeah. to go along with that. So that's that's what's the same. Let's talk about what's different. Wait, I just have to say the same chest piece. Like, they both weren't like half shirts or anything. They were both like... Straight on. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the little middle, mid-torso piece, yeah. the ab piece. Yeah. Yeah, it's got the smooth ab piece to reflect the armor. Good point. That's that's good. I like that. I don't like the, the muscle piece being there. The smooth piece needs to be there. So then, and, and that part's back metalized too. Like, under his armor, that whole chest is back metalized, yeah. which is good. 
You know, that, that way there's no inconsistency when you move his arm, move his torso up or something like that. Yeah. Okay, the, the cannon arm, which is one of my favorite awesome. aspects of this figure. You know, you've got, in filmation, he changed the cannon a lot. Yeah. And as a kid, Hurricane Hordak was like, the Hordak had, if you like the cartoon, because he had that cannon arm. Yeah. You know, you pull out all the attachments, and it's basically cannon arm oh, so Hordak. that, the regular one had that same design? It had, yeah, like, her, that red thing right there? Uh, I can't remember if it had all those paint highlights. I don't... I don't remember. I'd have to look. Um, but it had this, this cannon arm, you know, where you if you took out the attachments, the hurricane attachments, it was just a straight cannon arm, yeah. which is really cool. Yeah, really cool. So I love the cannon arm, and I really hope if we do get a Filmation Hordak, that we get some kind of interchangeable arm thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like to do yeah, cannon yeah, arm or regular. If you could take off the cannon arm and put his vacuum cleaner arm on from that one episode. Oh, yeah, like a bunch yeah. of different crazy Filmation attachments. That'd be great. And, too, since it's all this is pegs in there, it'd be great to have that. Yeah. Okay, so now let's talk about the vac metalized armor. But wait, if they did the well, cannon arm, they'd yeah. have to make it more of a silverish type thing. Yeah, they'd have to do a different paint job for sure. But they still have the. They have the skull. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the vac metalized armor. When I when I first heard they were doing Hurricane Hordak, I was like, oh man, I hope he's got the vac metalized armor. But at the same time, I was kind of like, well, Hero didn't have the vac metalized armor. So now it's kind of weird to have one with vac metalized armor without. But you ended up loving it. I don't know if I do love it. I thought you just said you did. No, I did not. No, I was saying that I, I don't love it. Uh, um, I, I thought I was going to love it, but I don't know if I do, because it's got a, a few minor issues. Like, they did... For one thing, it, it doesn't match Hero, which that that is one of the things that kind of... I like consistency amongst the line. Oh, wait, I need to say something. Okay. Kids, do not take this in the bathtub. It will get rusty because it's real metal. No, it's not real metal. But don't take it in the bathtub either way. That's that's a whole other story, though. Yeah. That Moss Man thing. Anyway, so you, you, you've got Hero now, who's got this gold plastic armor, and then you've got Hordak that gets the back metalizing treatment. Yeah. So it's kind of like an inconsistency from their line. I wish they'd have just stuck with one way or the other. Yeah. That's just my opinion. But... The other issue I have is that the, you know, the, they use the soft material for it I can to make see it kind that. of buckle, yeah. you know, and it, they didn't do it in two pieces. They had it come around because they talked about how the joints would have to be too big for the Mac metalizing. Oh. And so they've got these kind of weak little connector pins, and mine were actually kind of bent when I got it, and it wasn't together, and I had to, like, bend them back into place. So I'm constantly worried about how the quality is on this, like if it's going to hold up, it's going to start cracking if those tabs are going to hold up over time, you know, having the stress of being connected. I don't know, it just seems like maybe it was more trouble than it was worth. Yeah. And um, if you get this toy for your kids, if your adults are watching this, don't let them take the armor off because it's a little more easier than other armors to break. Yeah, that that's a good point. You know, it, this is definitely not one that you got. If you guys get, I know Keaton's got one, yeah. but if you if you get one too... Taking the armor off would be a big mistake. Yeah. You know, because... Well, it would, you know me, Dad. I will never... Yeah, you don't, you don't switch out your armor. But, okay. you know, the tabs and things like that would be an issue, yeah. I think, for playing with. So that's that's the debate on the armor. The other issue about the armor that a lot of people have is the red dial thing in the back. That doesn't move. It doesn't move. It's it's They're paying homage to the vintage line when they do these things. They yeah. put the dial on, on optic. Um, they put a dial? Yeah, there's a little dial on optic's back. So there's a dial there. There's a little dial on Cyclone's belt. Well, um, I know that one. But yeah. So they put this dial on the back to represent his dial from the, the, the figure. And, you know, I actually don't have a problem with this. A lot of people yeah. online do. I just think of it as, like, you know, it's a piece of his armor. Like, it's a power pack or, you know, it's just some kind of decoration to the armor. Yeah. This doesn't bother me that much. And I think it's kind of cool that they're trying to um, make that vintage piece yeah. seem as if it was actually part of his armor. You know, kind of, I don't know... Um, Working backwards, you know, saying, "Oh, well, that that's not just the dial; it's a piece of the armor." Oh, wait, like no, that. I have a question. Yeah. Well, you like better Hurricane Hordak or regular Hordak? Uh, I think I still like regular Hordak better. Yeah. There are some pieces that I like better on this, like we were saying, you know, you can cannon arm. Yeah, the cannon arm and switching out the the head and things like yeah. that, so you can have you can match to make your perfect Hordak. If you don't like him with the cape, you know, take this piece off and put it on your regular Hordak, which I may do. You know, I kind of like we talked about. I as a kid. My vintage Hordak lost its cape, so... Um, I didn't know the vintage Hordak It does, but it's a little tiny flimsy cape. And since Filmation one doesn't have it, it's not a big deal to have it. Yeah. Let's talk about the accessories. He's got the three attachments, just like in the vintage line. He's got this kind of weird bat blade thing. 
I was asking Tia, do you want which accessory do you want? And I was like, oh, the bat. Like, it looks like a bat. Yeah. yeah. It looks like a spinning bl- bat thing. And then he's got what they call his um, thunderball mace, which is basically three balls attached to these rods that, you know, spin around and attack. And it sort of looks like a mace. Yeah. And then he's got his battle shield, which is which like a is shield. Awesome. Yeah. It's it got like these three, can, s- four spikes on there. Can it, like, if he spins it, it turns to, like, a tornado or whatever? Yeah, it's like the hurricane. He's making yeah. a hurricane with it or whatever. Um, the thing about this was, when I saw the pictures, I thought that these blades were going to be able to move. And if I remember right... I I would see, like, this thing. I was like, oh, those things probably move. Yeah, and they don't. And I, I thought that maybe the prototype did. I, I could be wrong about that. But I'm kind of glad they don't, because I wouldn't want them flopping yeah. all over the place. I like that it's kind of sturdy. But when you pu- when you push these in, it's it's like the trap jaw figure and Roboto yeah. figure. Um, they just peg in there. You can't get really the spinning feature going on. So you took pictures of him in each accessory. Yeah, I took pictures and of each one. We should talk about like his saw or whatever. Oh, oh let's mention the saw. Not his well, not saw. his saw, but Spy Monkey Creations made this cool saw attachment yeah. that we got at PowerCon. And that can plug in there, and he's got this long sort of chainsaw attachment. Yeah. So you can augment your Hordak with that, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so I think that's about it for the figure for now. Let's talk about, um, let's talk about the bio here. Hurricane Hordak. Real name, Hector Kerr. We already talked about this. It's we, not a good name. We don't like the name. We're not a big fan of this name, and his name hasn't changed. After being released from the exile in Despondos by Evil Lynn, Hordak returned to Eternia with his ageless army to once again claim its hidden magical properties for his own. Finding his former pupil Skeletor on the throne following the apparent death of King Randor, Hordak upgraded his armor with a Hurricane Blaster, which he used to challenge the Lord of Destruction and drive the Snake Men back into hibernation. After ripping through the walls of Snake Mountain, Hurricane Hordak casts off his battle shield and advances on Skeletor, 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 whirling his Thunderball Mace. Okay, a lot of stuff in this bio. Um, he gets released from the Exonus Bondos by Evil Evelyn. Evil Inn frees everybody. We'll find that throughout the bios that she's... He didn't have him, like, the 2000X cartoon one? She was trying to get him freed in the 2000X Oh. Episode. Um... He, we got his return to Eternia, his ageless army, which, you know, that, that kind of plays into some of the other bios where it talks about how old Rizlor is and things like that, and why these characters were there during King Grayskull time, and yet they're still here. I'm kind of glad that they did him and Leech on the same month, because they're two Horde members. Yeah, it was cool to get two Horde guys at the same time. They didn't do very many Horde members, so this is kind of a cool thing to do. Yeah, it's cool to get a couple of Horde guys right off the bat. So, he, he finds his former people Skeletor on the throne, following the apparent death of King Randor. So, death is in... Yeah, that's... But we find out in that little mini-comic that King Randor comes back. And that's... Oh, yeah. Hopefully that's not spoiling anything, because the first page was online, so... And that shows King Randor's return. Wasn't that the comic I got at your panel? Yeah, you got that, that comic. Hordak upgrades his armor with a Hurricane Blaster, which he uses to challenge the Lord of Destruction to drive the Snake Men back to their harmonization. So they're, they're saying he's upgraded his armor to this Hurricane armor, which is cool, and that's kind of playing into the whole... Hurricane Hordak thing? You know, where they're explaining the armors. No, not the Hurricane Hordak thing, but where they did Battle Armor He-Man, and they talked oh, about the yeah, yeah. and, and Battle Armor Skeletor. <laughs> so it's kind of cool that they're giving, um, you know, these armors a, a place in the storyline. Yeah. That they're explaining them. He challenges a little destruction, he drives the Snake Men back into hibernation, um, and then at the very end of the bio... He casts off his battle shield and advances on Skeletor, rolling his Thunderball Mace, which is, you know, just talking from straight from the Vintage card back, which is pretty cool. Wait, that's the spot on the Vintage card back. Wouldn't it be cool to, like, make a whole um, Hurricane series where they gave, like, everybody, like, certain kind of armor? You mean, like, an all an armored series? Yeah. Not a Hurricane series, but an armored series? Yeah. Yeah, it'd be cool, and I think they're, they're getting to that point, and that's what the A-list variants are for, is to fill in some of these guys, get them back out again in case you missed them, with different differences for people to collect them all. So we're, we're getting kind of that. I think we'll we'll see some other A-list characters get, you know, armor treatments, and even maybe some that weren't in the Vintage line that we might see, or some stuff in the 2000X cartoon, things like that. But they're weaving these armors actually into the storyline to have them make sense, instead of just being a variant, which is kind of cool. Which in the 2000X, I don't think you ever saw Hordak. All you saw was that blue. No, you saw Hordak. You did? yeah. I'll, I'll show you the episode. Okay. I guess that's it. We're going to wrap this one up. Um, Good journey. So, well, hang on, hang on. So, uh, I, we hope that you guys like this format. We, you know, I, we understand that you guys probably like the other format, too. And hopefully we'll get back to that format. But we hope you enjoyed this one as well. And you, may, you might have a few more of these 
tight for a while until we get back on track with our actual camera. But we like this. I think we're, yeah. gonna, we're gonna, I think it's going to turn out cool. So I guess that's it. Right? Yep. Should we say good journey? Good journey. Good journey. We'll see you guys next time.